Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Life in the Universe pandemic series. It's a set of uh, short talks about things to do with life in the universe and astrobiology. And today I thought I would take a distinctly pandemic turn of events and talk about this. Is lockdown a bit like being on Mars? And this follows a, a conversation I've been having by email with a colleague of mine where we've been musing about the similarities between this situation and being, say, on the moon or Mars, or in fact, anywhere else in space. Now, that may seem a little bit of a strange thought. I don't know whether you've uh, ever thought about that or had time to think about that, but there are some similarities. And one of the biggest similarities is that when you go outside your house now, you're going out into a dangerous environment. There's something out there that could potentially be lethal. And it's a similar situation when you're in a habitat on the moon or Mars. When you go outside into the outside environment, uh, you are walking out into an instantaneously lethal environment. And there's all that trepidation in preparing to go out into this deadly environment that could kill you. Now, of course, it's not quite as extreme as on the moon or Mars. You can still go out and enjoy the sunshine and breathe the air, uh, and you don't have to wear a full body spacesuit, but you are still going out into an environment uh, that is a lot more dangerous than it used to be, where there is something out there that could be potentially lethal. And that creates a whole psychological state that is not dissimilar to what one might experience on the moon or Mars. If you wear personal protection equipment, it's a little bit like wearing a spacesuit, putting on a mask and gloves. Again, not quite as extreme on the moon or Mars. If you go out to the outside environment, you're going to need a full body spacesuit. But nevertheless, this whole idea of putting on equipment, uh, putting on gloves, putting on a, a, a mask, if indeed you do that at all. But if you do do it, you're preparing to go out into this dangerous environment, a little bit like preparing your spacesuit to go out onto the surface of Mars. So this, it's this whole idea that the outside environment is dangerous, inside your house you're safe, and every time you go out, you're taking a risk. Another similarity is that you go outside for short periods of time, whether it's to get your groceries or to do some exercise. Similarly, on the moon or Mars, you would go out for a short period of time uh, to go on a science expedition, to collect samples, to do some exploration. And the time that you would spend outside would be set by the amount of oxygen you would have. In some sense, you can think about going to the grocery store as like an extravehicular activity, as it would be called on the moon or Mars. You have a specific mission to go and get some vegetables, to go and get some milk, and you go and do your mission and you come back to your habitat, your home after this dangerous mission. That's exactly what happens on the moon or Mars. You go out on your mission and come back to the safety of your habitat. Again, a little bit more extreme uh, beyond the Earth, but the principles and the psychology are somewhat similar. And even if it's not as, ex as extreme, uh, you are getting a taste, at least a small taste of what it would be like to live on the moon or Mars for a long period of time, that danger of going outside and the preparations that you need to uh, make. There are some big differences. Uh, when we go outside, we practice social distancing. We try and keep away from other people. We might go out alone. And of course, on the moon or Mars, it's completely the opposite of that. When you go out to the outside environment, uh, you stick together in a group. You don't want people going off on their own. They might fall into a crater or down a crevasse. So in fact, uh, any expedition out onto another planetary surface is all about sticking together safely in a small group, huddled together and looking after each other, which is sort of the opposite of what goes on uh, when, when we go outside during the pandemic. There are some other social similarities, however, inside your house, particularly if you're with a group of people or with a family, uh, you're having to learn how to live with people for a long period of time in a confined environment. You've got to learn how to get on with them, how to not argue and how to uh, take into consideration other people's needs. That's just the reality of living in a house for a long period of time with a small group of people. On the moon or Mars, people it will be in habitats. They'll be with other people who have gone on those planetary missions, who are inside that habitat. They too are gonna to have to learn to get on with other people and to deal with life in a confined environment. The same situation on the International Space Station. So the inside of your house is a little bit like a habitat on the moon or the International Space Station, at least in terms of the psychology of learning to live in a confined environment uh, with other people. So those are just some of the uh, interesting similarities between this situation and possibly a situation of being on other planetary bodies. And you might want to use this opportunity to think about 
would I want to live on the moon or Mars? This restriction that I'm feeling, this danger of going outside, uh, magnify that. Would I actually want to live my whole life like that uh, on another planetary body? Because that's essentially what it's going to be like in many ways. So you're getting some sort of experience of living in space. Now, there is another aspect to all of this I think is particularly interesting, which bears on the matter of political philosophy. One of the things that's been very notable since the start of this pandemic is how we've all been quite ready to hand over our liberties in the interests of stopping the virus. So we've been told that the virus is dangerous. We've got to stay inside, not just for our own safety, but that if we break the lockdown rules, we're threatening the lives of other people. In other words, it's a very selfish thing to break the lockdown and go outside unnecessarily. And during the last month, uh, all private companies have been closed down. We can only go outside uh, for one form of exercise. We shouldn't do anything that isn't essential. All of these liberties have imposed restrictions of movement that are worse than some of the worst totalitarian regimes that have existed on the earth, at least in terms of preventing you from going to other places, from driving to other towns and cities. And yet we have willingly given up these liberties because we perceive our lives and the lives of others to be threatened. Now, I think most of us think that these lockdown procedures are worthwhile and, and justified, but nevertheless, that doesn't change the fact that we have given up our liberties in response to something potentially lethal in the external environment that may um, threaten our lives. Now go to the moon or Mars and think about that environment where the outside, uh, the outside conditions are instantaneously lethal and imagine the conditions that that will create, the social and political conditions that will create in a settlement on the moon or Mars where the outside conditions threaten to take away your life. You can imagine that people will give up their liberties. You can also imagine that the authorities running an extraterrestrial settlement will convince people that they should give up their liberties. And they will also portray uh, possibly the outside environment as being a lethal enemy. You may have noticed that many world leaders during this pandemic have portrayed the virus as a war. The idea of fighting this war against the virus, that we must stay inside because this is a battle. We're all in this together. We must all stick together and we must defeat the virus. We must overcome this threat to our lives and our society. So in portraying the virus as a, a war, a threat to our society, we very convincingly uh, been uh, able to give up our liberties because that's what we all need to do in the interests of social cohesion and success against the virus. In extraterrestrial environments on the Moon or Mars, we can also imagine that the external environment will be portrayed as a constantly lethal threat, a, a total war, if you like, against the outside environment that is threatening to engulf the whole settlement and take away everyone's lives. If you go outside the habitat through the airlock without proper equipment, you not only threaten your life, you selfishly threaten the lives of everyone else in the settlement. If you do something or go somewhere in the habitat that might threaten depressurization, the same thing, you're threatening other people's lives. And if you say something or you dissent against a political decision, that might uh, cause uh, other forms of dissension in the settlement that will threaten the lives of everyone. So just like the pandemic, you can see how the uh, lethality, the danger that's lurking out there in the outside environment on the moon or Mars will be used as an instrument of tyranny, an instrument of coercive control. And just to reiterate, I think most of us think that the lockdown um, uh, procedures, at least in, in, in our own country here, are reasonable for preventing the health services from being overwhelmed. But nevertheless, the lesson is there that people will give up their liberties relatively easily when there's something physically dangerous in the outside environment, we can expect the same in space. So it raises fascinating questions. How do you build a free society in space against a lethal environment? Imagine this pandemic now and imagine the restrictions on going outside. How would you build a free society in a civilization that was perpetually like the restrictions that we're experiencing right now? What are the forms of liberty that can be expressed in these sorts of societies? Well, I'm sitting here giving a lecture online, so maybe online is a good way for people to express their ideas, to express dissension about uh, the way in which they're being managed in the external environment. But it's a lot more difficult for people to gather outside, to, um, to have 
uh, disagreements with the authorities in the form of public demonstrations. That's a very difficult thing to do now. It would be a very difficult thing to do in an extraterrestrial environment as well. So the pandemic gives us an insight into the potential problems with maintaining liberty beyond the space, uh, in the space frontier, beyond the Earth. And it also perhaps stimulates us to think about what could be the mechanisms of maximizing individual freedom and liberty in environments where there are these extreme physical restrictions on movement caused by uh, danger in the outside environment. Um, so these are some thoughts. And as I say, one of the things that you might like to think about is what has this got to do with space exploration? Would I like to live on the moon or Mars? And perhaps being locked in your house with the dangerous outside environment is a really good time to think about space exploration and space settlement. Would I want to go and live on another planet? In the meantime, while you're thinking about that, uh, take care of yourselves, look after yourselves in this pandemic. Thanks for joining me.